Hello everybody, welcome to chapter 38. In this chapter, we are discussing about developmental disabilities and disorder. What is developmental disabilities and disorder? Let's begin the discussion from the word disability. Disability can happen at any age. And disability is the loss of physical function or mental function. From a childhood to the adulthood, at any period of time, a person can be disabled. It is related with the physical disability or mental disability. It is all about the loss of function, physical function and mental function. For example, physical function is related with physical activity. Person cannot walk. Mental function is related with mental activities, like person cannot communicate the language, person cannot understand what other people are telling. This is mental function. But the word developmental disability means it is a permanent disability a child is born with or this disability begins in childhood before the age of 18 years, it starts. So, developmental disorder and disability can be mild. Mild is manageable. It's uh, not very difficult. Moderate could be difficult and severe, it is the most difficult. It's unmanageable. Here, the developmental disorder and disabilities are associated with life skills. What are the life skills? Function is limited in three or more life skills. Self-care, a person who is physically or mentally disabled cannot perform certain self-care activities like eating, somebody has to feed the person, like changing dress, somebody has to help in changing the dress. Understanding and expressing speech and language, person cannot speak the language or person cannot express language. Learning, for learning, person need to communicate. Learning without communication, it is very difficult. Person cannot take part in learning process. Learning process, there is an exchange of idea. People have to listen. People have to speak. Mobility is all about movement of the body, walking, etc. Self-direction, what do you mean by self-direction? Solving the problem, making choices and decision. A person with a developmental disorder and disability cannot do many functions like problem solve, making decision, making choices, etc. Independent living. Independent, what is necessary for independent living? So many things the person has to do on his or her own. Uh, but the independent living is not possible when the person has a developmental disabilities or disorder. Somebody has to be there. Maybe that is the place we PSW have to assist person, help person as per needed. Economic self-sufficiency. Can you say a developmental disorder or disability? The person has those disorder and disability. Can the person be economically self-sufficient in the adult life? It's very difficult because person doesn't have learned anything. The person needs to get money and money is not possible. Maybe the government has certain amount of money they, they pay, but it is not sufficient. That's why self-sufficiency is very difficult. It is always person is depending on others. 
Most individuals who are developmentally disabled need lifelong assistance. Throughout the life, somebody has to assist the person. It's very difficult for the family members. That's why in certain area, support workers are hired and they are assigned to help the person. There are shift jobs for the support worker to help the people who are physically or mentally disabled. We need to support them. And there are certain special needs, like taking the person to the doctor's office. You may have to use the wheelchair for the person since the person is physically disabled and cannot walk properly. The person cannot maintain the balance. The person can fall at any time. That's why we support worker have to help there. Independent to the extent possible is the goal for these individuals. We have to make them independent. All our functions should be directed towards making them independent because it is very, very helpful for the person. And in certain cases, people become independent. The disorder or the disability affects the child and family throughout the life. When a child is physically or mentally disabled, the parents have to look after the child. One parent at least has to look after the child at home. That's why even it affects the life of the parents at home. Family caregiver may be under the great stress. Family caregiver. You, as a support worker, you are not family caregiver. You are a caregiver from external sources. The mother could be family caregiver. The sister, the brother, the father could be family caregiver. They have great stress. They must have to balance caregiving and other responsibilities. For example, a mother has a disabled baby, but she is a full-time job holder. She has to manage everything. She has the responsibility of her job. At the same time, she has to give care for her child. Can lead to burnout. This is the most stressful situation. It's called burnout. Economic or financial burdens. It means financial pressure, crisis, special equipment. The family needs more money for this special equipment. For example, a motor wheelchair. To buy a motor wheelchair, family has to spend a lot of money and family may not have those money. That's why it causes financial burden, financial pressure, economic pressure for the family. Some children need long-term care in the center for people who are developmentally disabled. Do you think children also go to long-term care facility? Yes. Long-term care facility is the facility where people need long-term care, permanent care, care until they leave. It goes with the long-term care. So some children need to go to long-term care centers who are developmentally disabled. In and other cases, some adults need nursing center care. Respite care give, gives parents and caregivers a break. Respite care. Remember the word respite care. You are, you are working with the child when the mother is in the job. And when mother com comes back to home, you go home and mother is taking care of the child. It is called respite care. Again, home care and other community agencies often, often provide need and support for the services. There are different community centers where the disabled child are, children are gathered there and they are looked after, maintaining their safety. And this is the community agencies. They are supporting the disabled child. For example, group home, there are certain group home, they provide the home-like setting. They are 
placed in the group home where they are given every type of home-like environment. They eat, they learn something, they play everything in the home care setting, group home. Types of developmental disorder and disability. Now we are turning our discussion towards what are the type of disorders and disability. Let's focus on that. They are usually caused by the conditions, certain conditions like illness, illness or accident that injure the brain. Children are playing all the time and if they are carelessly left to play and they can get accident at any time and because of the accident, head injury, brain injury, they might be disabled. So it is called intellectual disability. When somebody has a mental, certain mental disability, it is called intellectual disability. And intellectual disabilities, the person cannot communicate. Another is Down syndrome. Remember the word, Down syndrome. Similarly, cerebral palsy, it's another type. Another is, most common is autism. There are so many autistic children. And another is epilepsy. Epilepsy, the children usually experience the seizure. And spina bifida, it's another type of disorder. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. When the parent drink a lot of alcohol during the pregnant period, the child is born with those alcoholic syndrome. It's called fetal when the baby is inside the mom's womb and the fetal is affected by the mother's drinking habit and the child is born with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And another is ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. The children are like doing something all the time, irritating other people in the home and in the school and in the daycare everywhere. These are the disorders. Some children may have some more than one condition. The more difficult for the PSW, PSW's work will be when a child has more than one disorder, it is very difficult. We feel burnout. We are full of the stresses. Now let's begin from the intellectual disability. What is intellectual disability or mental health related disability or it's also called cognitive disability. Impaired ability to learn below the average, intelligence and limitation in the ability to function. Impaired ability to learn, person cannot learn or if the person learns, it goes below the average. The person does not learn as the age demands. That's why their school classes are impaired. They cannot compete with other students. Their understanding, their learning ability is very, very limited. No longer called mental retardation. Nowadays, the terminology mental retardation is no more huge. It is called what? It is called intellectual disability. This is a word, intellectual disability not mental retardation. Intelligence relates to learning, thinking, and reasoning. Can learn new skill, but at a slower rate. If we say somebody mentally retarded, it is totally functionless. Because even the person with certain intellectual disability, they can learn, they can think, they can start thinking, more and reasoning for the action they do, they can do the reasonings. Can learn new skill but at a slower rate. The person with the intellectual disability, they can learn, but the rate of learning could be slower. Often have difficulty with communication, self-care and social interaction. 
communication they do not have the communication skill they cannot verbalize the need they cannot do the self care somebody must be there working for them and social interaction means just making friends and working with the group and communicating with other people the intellectually disabled uh, children they cannot do these important activities and our role as a personal support worker we are working with those children if we are working with those children we have to assist them we have to help them according to care plan brain development is impaired in the intellectual development what happens brain development is impaired impaired means dysfunction it means not functioning well it can occur before birth during the birth intellectual disabilities range from mild to severe it could be mild or severe very difficult to manage cause may be unknown some possible cause include hydrocephalus hydro means water cephalus means head water is collected in the head retention of the water in the head it is called hydrocephalus that's a disorder penil Pheni ketonuria. Phenyl ketonuria. It is all about collection of certain amino acid in the mind and it damages the brain. Second by baby syndrome. Second by baby syndrome. when a baby is violently shaken by caregiver baby's head is violently shaken by moved by other people this syndrome may occur so all these syndrome are equally severe cases for the children and it causes their mental disability similarly iq test measure intelligence they are very normal or below the range the normal is 90 to 110 but mildly intellectually disabled children they cannot take part they cannot get good marks in the iq their iq becomes 55 to 70 55 to 70 slow to learn but able to attend re regular school mild are slow to learn they can attend the school can work and function in a society with the support they can they need the support for any function and they need external support for that now we go to moderate moderately intellectually disabled iq is below 55 need daily support at home and at work we have to prepare them for the school or for the for the work they need complete support and severely disabled intellectually disabled people's iq goes below 25 they need constant support in all the area all the life skills like they need to get food somebody has to feed them somebody has to change their dress and so on The Canadian Association for Community Living is a national association dedicated to serving people with intellectual disability and their family. The government of Canada and all the INGOs and NGOs in Canada they are working for the intellectually disabled children. The Canadian Association for Community Living and it is dedicated it is sincerely dedicated it is paying more and more attention to the serving the people who are intellectually disabled especially the children they believe that this government ngos ingos organization believe that person with intellectual disability must be able to enjoy they have 
they have to enjoy the life and maintain good quality of life. Even if they are intellectually disabled, their quality of life must not be compromised. They must live the same quality of life we people, other people live. Life must be meaningful. Their life is very, very meaningful like everybody's life and dignified. Their life is also dignified, means full of prestige. Children should live in a family. Their children should not be left alone. They should live in a family. Children who are disabled should learn and play with children without disability. Remember, the children with the disability, they must have a chance to learn with the children who have no disabled uh, condition and be integrated into the regular school. They must be integrated. They must be mixed with other healthy students in the regular schools. Adults should control their lives to the greatest extent possible. It is the duty of their parents or their guardians who should control their lives to the greatest extent possible. They have to give them all the possible facilities, all the possible comfort, all the possible assistance. People with intellectual disability have a sexual, emotional, social need and desire. They are like the normal children, normal people. They have all the normal people's desire. They do have the same emotional and social needs and desires. They need to make the friendship. They need to go to school. They need to learn something. They need to communicate. Maybe they do them in a little bit lower than the regular, the healthy children, but still they need it. They have a right to privacy. When you give care to them, you have to put the curtain, you have to close the door in the bathroom, even if they are, they are intellectually disabled, they have the same right of privacy like we have. They have the right to love. We need to love them as a caregiver and to be loved by others. They can love, and they demand the same thing from others, from the parents, from the school teacher, from the friends, from the siblings, and from us, we, the PSW support workers. Some persons with intellectual disabilities can control their sexual urges, some cannot. They may have the same sexual urges like normal people, some can control, some cannot. It depends on their own personal ability. Sometimes persons with intellectual disabilities are sexually abused. By whom? Maybe sometimes by the family member, by the relatives, by the caregiver. And it is a criminal charge to abuse somebody sexually touch others' body parts sexually, it is a criminal charge and we have to be careful about it. People with intellectual disability need, need to be educated about the sexual abuse. They need to know, like us, what is a sexual abuse and what is the safe sex and other sexual issues. They need to get a good sex education, it means like other healthy children they do. Now we go to an, one most common disease, Down syndrome. Have you seen any children with the Down syndrome? It's a genetic disorder and intellectual disability. Genetically, the children inherit down syndrome is the most common genetic cause of mild to moderate intellectual disability. It is caused by an error at fertilization. Remember, error at fertilization. There was something was missing during the fertilization. That's why from the very beginning of their life in the mother's womb, they have the issue of that because it is the error from the fertilization. In Down syndrome, an extra chromosome is present. 
extra chromosome is present. 47 instead of 46. All normal human beings during the fertilization, they have 46 chromosome. But they have 47 chromosome. This is the wrong. In Canada, Down syndrome is one of the most common congenital, congenital chromosomal disorder. It's before the birth, people have this chromosome functioning. At that time, this Down syndrome begins. That's why it's most congenital chromosomal disorder in Canada. The Down syndrome child has certain features caused by the extra chromosome. A small head, the sign and symptom of that is a small head, flat face, flat face, oval shaped eyes, oval shaped eyes, that slant upward, it's turning upward, large tongue, they always have a large tongue, short, wide neck, their neck becomes very wide, wide, flat nose, small ears. Remember, I tell you one thing, all the children of Down syndrome, relatively, they look similar in terms of their face, facial expression. They look like the same brother and sister from the same parents. Many children with the Down syndrome have other health problems. Dementia, see, and Alzheimer's disease may appear in adults with Down syndrome. These, these are certain neurological disorder. These are not mental health. These are neurological disorder. These are very common in, in the children when they become adult. Person with Down syndrome needs speech language therapy. They cannot communicate properly. That's why their need of language therapy is realized. They need physiotherapy. They cannot walk properly. They sometimes they need wheelchair and occupational therapy. These therapies, occupational therapies, they determine uh, what type of mattress, bed, wheelchair, all and other gadgets are necessary for them. And physiotherapy, they are working on how to improve the body movement and all other things. Training for self-care skill. They need to get training for the self-care. If they are independently caring themselves, it's easy for them and easy for everybody, for the family, for the caregiver and everyone. Health and sex education. They need to have all these health and sex education like the normal children. A healthy diet and regular exercise, which is necessary for the survival. A healthy diet. How to eat healthy diet? Follow Canada's food guide. Healthy eating with Canada's food guide. We need to teach them as a support worker. We may have to encourage them and take them to the exercising places regular exercise because weight gain and constipation are very, very frequent problem with them. The next disease and disability we are discussing is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a disorder affecting the muscle control. The children who has the disorder of cerebral palsy, the defect is in the motor region of the brain. Their brain of the, the part of the brain called motor function, motor region of the brain is functionless. One or more of the following thing may occur with the cerebral palsy. Involuntary movement, poor coordination and posture, muscle weaknesses, difficulty or inability to walk or speak. It occurs before, during or within a few years after birth. This is one of the 
most common and most difficult to provide care. This disorder, the person with this disorder, it is very difficult to provide them care, but we have to provide them care because they are involuntary movement. Their body is making some kind of movement like hands or la legs or some facial uh, posture, gesture. It's being happened without, uh, without their desire. The poor coordination, they cannot walk. It's called gait. They cannot maintain the gait or balance while walking. And muscle become very, very weak and difficult or inability to walk or speak. And it occurs during, within the few years after the birth, even before the birth. Its causes include lack of oxygen to the brain and there is no cure. So what happens when there is a lack of oxygen to the brain? It's all about the circulatory problem because blood carries oxygen with the content called hemoglobin. The hemoglobin content of the blood carries the oxygen to the brain. Therefore, the children with cerebral palsy may have the circulatory issue at the same time. Cerebral palsy continue infant are at a risk of the following things. They are premature. They cannot become mature, have a low birth weight. The usual, the normal growth of the body, body weight is impaired by the cerebral palsy. They do not cry within, they do not cry within the first five minutes after birth. I remind you that a baby after birth have to cry as soon as the baby is born. But they cry first five minutes after the birth. That's their the problem. Need mechanical ventilation. What does mean by mechanical ventilation? They cannot have a good breathing. Their respiratory problem is very, very acute. That's why they are put in the ventilator, ventilators. They have a bleeding in the brain. Therefore, certain surgical activities go down after, even right after the birth. Because bleeding, the blood clot after the bleeding, it causes further issues in the brain like hemorrhage. They have heart, kidney, and spinal cord defects. Remember, they have a heart disorder, kidney disorder, and spinal cord is the backbone, it's disorder. Remember, the spinal cord is the part of central nervous system. That's why it doesn't help them to coordinate the balance. They have uh, blood problems. As I already told you, the circulation problem of the blood circulatory problem they might have. And they have a seizure. Seizure means when they, they all of a the sudden, they fall on the floor and it starts shaking the body. It's called seizure or epilepsy. So acquired brain injury, brain injury because of the accident or fall in infancy and early childhood can also result in cerebral palsy. These are the major and the most common causes. That's why the small children are, whenever they are, Parents or caregiver have to look after them anytime because their brain injury, it can lead to cerebral palsy. So what are the general signs and symptoms the children they show when they have the cerebral palsy? The first comes the body movement. The regular normal body movement is not expected spastic it means spasm means it's the it's like a contracture the body becomes 
all of the sudden it becomes very very stable it doesn't move it's called spastic spastic cerebral palsy uncontrolled contraction of the skeletal muscle the muscle becomes like a contracture the contraction becomes it it's unmovable it remains spastic or unmovable one or both side of the body may be involved sometime the both side of the body if one soldier has spastic muscle another soldier will be involved if one leg or thigh muscle is contraction another thigh muscle will be contracted at the same time posture and balance are affected means their gait the making the balance they cannot stand still or they can fall at any times difficulty eating because it is the muscle movement in eating you have to use the accessory muscle of your face and the bone are moving when you we chew the food even when we swallow some muscles are functioning that's why the the cerebral palsy affects the eating because the muscle and bone both of them are not functioning well dressing it's difficult for them to dress up completing activities of daily livings it's adls adls means going washroom changing dress coming here something like that walking or moving they cannot walk they cannot move it's very difficult their body movement is functionless Ethetoid cerebral palsy. It's another name for the cerebral palsy, another type of the cerebral palsy. It's a constant, slow waving or writhing motion. It's a slow waving type of motion. People become slow movement of the legs and hand. Difficulty reaching for grasping object. Difficulty reaching or grasping object. They cannot hold anything. difficulty remaining upright or sitting position or standing position all the time may involve tongue or face sometime their tongue and face is involved causing drooling and facial grimacing what do you mean? drooling occurs when somebody eats and the saliva from the mouth at the side of the mouth it begins to fall that's called drooling like small children when we feed them they drool it's called drooling and facial grimacing they are making different facial gesture posture like when they have some pain they are twisting the facial muscle it's called facial grimacing ataxic cerebral palsy is a third type of cerebral palsy ataxic weak muscle tone the muscle does not allow them to stand properly the muscle becomes very weak difficulty coordinating movement they cannot make walking or balancing themselves it appears on steady and shaky the legs are shaky it's all about imbalance of the walking and on steady not steady it's on steady and trouble keeping balance this is the big problem with this ataxic cerebral palsy we are continuing with the same cerebral palsy certain terms describes the body parts involved in in the people with this disorder cerebral palsy monoplasia mono means single mono mono means one or single paralysis of one limb monoplasia means one limb is paralyzed one leg or one hand is paralyzed hemiplasia hemi means half remember these are a uh, difficult term hemiplegia means complete or partial loss of ability to move one side of the body hemi is half usually the half part of the body is difficult to move and diplegia di means two diplegia means loss of ability to move corresponding parts on the both side of the body when they use the right hand they cannot move the left hand on the same direction it's called diplegia 
Both arms or both legs are affected but other areas of the body are not affected. In diplegia, both the limbs are affected. Quadriplegia, quadri means from the quarter, quadri four. Remember like that. Quarter, quarter, quadri four. Both arms and both legs in the quadri, the four must be there. Two arms and two legs. Both arms and both legs and the trunk and the neck muscles are affected. Trunk means the whole body. And the neck muscles are affected. Talking and eating may be difficult. When the trunk muscle and neck muscle is out of function, it's very difficult to swallow and eat the food and even talk to other people. Now we are going with the same cerebral plasy. The person with cerebral plasy can have many other impairments, means dysfunction, not functioning body parts. Care needs depend on the degree of brain damage. If their brain damage is very severe, their movement will be so much impaired and they need almost total care. It's called total care. Disability and impairments range from mild to severe. Mild, moderate and severe. There are three stages of disabilities and impairments. Mild is little bit manageable, moderate is difficult to manage, severe means unmanageable. They need total care and our role as a PSW is to give them total care. And where is a total care written? Please check your care plan. And the goal of our support and our help to make them independent is as follows. Physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is done by the physiotherapist. They are giving certain pressure to the muscles and bone to make them independent. Occupational therapy, they design the mattresses, bed, wheelchair and so on. And the speech therapies, they teach them how to speak in those critical situations, how to move the muscle, how to move the lips, how to move the tongue and so on. This is the functional duty of speech therapy. Some persons need braces and use crutches. Some person need braces and use crutches. The crutches are the walking um, aids. Some people need wheelchairs. It depends on their conditions. Some people need eyeglasses and hearing aids. Def definitely their eyesight would be poor. Their muscle in the face and uh, the ear area not functioning well. Surgery and drug can help some muscle problem. After the physiotherapist, when the physiotherapist cannot help anymore, then the surgical activities will be performed there by the surgeons and certain drugs are given them for the symptom management. Remember, these diseases are not curable. These, the medication are given for the children with cerebral palsy only for the symptom management, only to make it certain improvement for the day or night. Epilepsy. What is another name for the epilepsy? When anybody, can anybody tell me? It's all about the seizure. People start seizing. They fall on the floor or they start shaking the hand. Sometimes they bite their tongue and we have to be very careful about the people uh, having the issue of epilepsy. It's all about the mental function. When the electrical charge in the mind is so much charge, more than necessary, people start seizing and this is called epilepsy. A condition characterized by the recurrent seizure, a brief disturbance in the brain's normal electrical function. Remember, our brain works with certain kind of electrical function and when the electrical function is uncontrolled electrical function, a totally disturbed type of electrical function occurs in the mind that affects the awareness. Person is confused, not aware of the time, place and person. The movement is impaired. Person fall on the floor or the sensation is lost. Person, they get unconscious. 
for a certain period of time. A single seizure does not mean a person has epilepsy. A single seizure. Multiple seizure and so many type of seizure, they collaboratively make a person having the issue of epilepsy, but a single seizure. If a child has a fever, they might have seizure sometime. When the seizure is subsides, when the, the fever subsides, the seizure goes away. They, the child doesn't have any seizure anymore. But this is a chronic seizing status when the person has, it leads to the person in the state of epilepsy, the condition of epilepsy, the disorder and dysfunction of body movement. It can develop at any time in the person's life. It's not only the children. At any time in the person's life, epilepsy can occur. Affects the children and young adults more, and it is the most common. Generally, the epilepsy, it affects the children and young adults. They might have the seizure. We continue with the epilepsy. The types of seizure, generalized seizure, it affects the whole brain. It's a generalized means not specific. The whole area is affected in the brain. Reaction vary means differs according to the area in the brain. So what reaction the person shows depends on which part of the brain is affected by the seizure. Another seizure is partial seizure. It affects only one part of the brain. It's a partial. The name itself is suggestive of what type of seizure is a partial, generalizes the whole, complete. Tonic-clonic seizure involves convulsions, means violent sudden contraction of the muscles, and jerky movement with the loss of consciousness. Tonic-clonic tonic seizure is considered one of the severe case of disorder, mental disorder. Urinary and bowel incontinence may occur. There may be, there is a leakage of pee or poo could happen in their clothes after they are seized and it lasts one to seven minutes. Remember this time uh, for the examination point of view, there will be a couple of questions in your final exam and your weekly exam and all other exam. Please go to your workbook and complete this chapter's workbook. You will have more knowledge after that. And remember the underlying places because these are very, very important for your understanding. The causes of epilepsy is unknown. We, the, the scientists and the doctors have not determined what is the cause of epilepsy. And the drugs can control or prevent the seizure, but it does not cure. There is a difference between prevention and cure. Cure means completely subsiding. Cure means. But it's, it's not curing. It's just the controlling the seizure symptom. Prevent the seizure symptom, sign and symptom of those seizures. When control, epilepsy usually does not interfere with learning of ADLs. When the, after the seizure is subside, epilepsy is subside, it does not prevent the person. Person once again becomes a normal, a normal person. And the person starts doing the usual job, activities of daily living. The person goes, prepares meal, sometimes dress up himself or herself, goes to washroom, the activities of daily living, going to the job, drives the car like so many things, comes to normal once the problem subsides. May have job limitations if severe. Once the severity of the case, if the epilepsy goes more severe and severe, job limitation means the person's activity could be limited when the epilepsy goes to severe level, very, very unmanageable level. Higher risk of suicide. Person with the epilepsy has a low self-esteem and the person commits, sometimes commits suicide. An accidental death because person 
For example, how the accidental death happens. A person is driving the car. All of the sudden in the highway, the person has the epilepsy. The person has started the seizure. The person does not know where he is. And he just fainted. He's fall on the car's floor and car goes somewhere, hits there and it's accidental death can occur at any time. Therefore, those person with the condition of disorder of epilepsy, they are not supposed to drive or they are supposed to go with somebody if they need to go from one place to other places. Spina bifida. Spina bifida is another Mental health disorder, it's a intellect, um, neurological and mental health disorder that begins from the pregnancy. A congenital disorder involving improper closing of the spine of the spine before the birth. In the spinal cord, spinal cord is, it's a backbone of our body. The ending part of the spine is not properly closed. The defect of the spinal column occurs during the first months of the pregnancy, consummating folic acid before the conception. A doctor, the gynecologist, gives the pregnant woman, encourages the pregnant woman to take folic acid because when the mother during the pregnancy does not have enough folic acid, this spina bifida might occur to the children. Before conception and during the pregnancy reduces the risk. So remember the word, the folic acid, this is very, very important for the pregnant mother to take because it decreases the risk of developing those issue in the, in the, in the baby. In the spina bifida vertebra do not form properly. Your spinal column has so many vertebra, vertebra. We are invertebrate. We have so many bones. And the spinal column, the bones, the vertebra is there. And if they do not form properly, the posture is imbalanced. Our posture, we cannot stand. It, this leaves a split in the vertebra. The split leaves the spinal cord unprotected. And the spinal cord, when the spinal cord is unprotected, this is a place where the, the nerve, <coughs> excuse me, when the nerves are passing the impulses through the spinal cord to the head, both the spinal cord and the, the head brain is the central nerve system. These are the two parts of central nerve system. And spina bifida can occur anywhere in the spine. The lower back is the most common side. Remember, if a child complains of the lower back and shows those signs and symptoms, maybe we have to remind the family, even it, it may be because of those issues of disorder. Type of spina bifida. Spina bifida occulta. The vertebra are closed. The vertebra are closed. The spinal cord and the nerve are normal. It looks like normal. The person has a dimple or tuft. Dimple or tuft of hair on the back, the back side, the lower back. Often there are no symptoms. Foot weaknesses and bowel and bladder problem can occur because bowel and bladders are guided by the central nervous system. And because of this issue, central nervous system does not have the command over the sphincter of bowel control and bladder control. Types of this disorder, spina bifida cystica, spina Bifida cystica. Look, the name looks be, looks a little bit difficult even to pronounce. Part of the spinal column is in a pouch or sac. There is a pouch. The spinal column becomes in a pouch or a sac. A membrane of 
or a thin layer of skin covers the sac. The pouch is easily injured. Once the pouch is injured, there is an injury at the muscle in the bone in the nerve's endings. Infection can occur at any time once the injury is there. Infection can occur at any time. There are two types of spina bifida cystica, meningocele, meningocele, myelomeningocele, or meningomyelocele. These are the types. Types of spina bifida cystica, meningo, meningocele. The sac does not contain nerve tissue. In the meningocele, sac does not have the nerve tissue. Because you, we already discussed that the spinal cord is the main, like a highway of the nerve, nerve uh, transmission. All the nerves are going through the spinal cord at the backside of our bone protected by the vertebras. And if there is an issue, there are, everything will be affected. The spinal cord and the nerves are usually normal. Nerve damage usually does not occur. Surgery corrects the defect. In meningocele, surgery can correct the defect. But myelomeningocele, the surgery cannot correct it. The pouch contains nerves, spinal cord, meninges, and cerebrospinal fluid. This fluid is inside the body, inside the central nervous system. In the head, there is a fluid in between the muscle layer and between the bone and the muscle. There is a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. Cere cerebro means the head. Spinal is the backbone. Cerebrospinal fluid, it covers the brain and the spinal cord. So that fluid is also there. Nerve damage occurs. Loss of function occurs below the level of damage. The defect is closed with surgery. Most common and most serious form of spina bifida. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Now we are coming to another disorder. It's called fetal. Fetal is after the conception, the fetus means the very beginning days of human life in the mother's womb. The fetal alcohol spectrum syndrome disorder, alcohol spectrum uh, disorder. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder are a group of physical and mental abnormalities in a child that result from alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption by the mother during the pregnancy. Remember, alcohol is never good for anybody. That's why even the pregnant woman, if takes the alcohol, this is very tragic for the babies. Most common preventable developmental disability. How, how is this preventable? Can you tell me? If somebody is pregnant, encourage the person do not drink any wine, any alcohol, because the baby growing inside will be directly affected by the mother's every sip of drink. Characteristics of facial features, a small head, these are the sign and symptom of alcohol spectrum disorder. Small eyes, opening, thin upper lip, and small chin. These are the disorders at facial and physical level. Problem include intellectual disability. It's called alcoholic syndrome also. Intellectual disability means person is unable to use the words, learning is disabled, communication is not proper, behavioral. In terms of the behavior person shows, it's very difficult to know that person, what the person is doing there. The person cannot maintain the behavior. Generally, behavior involves with the language. Learning is impaired. The person cannot take part in the learning. Emotional problem means person can show anger or 
person can be happy all of the sudden the person can be angry the emotional issues might be there poor social skill means person cannot be mixed up with other people in the family in the school and person cannot make good friends person cannot work as a team member inability manage anger as we already discussed person fails to manage the anger the the person has uncontrollable emotion and the anger or frustration mental health problem it leads to mental health problem persons with anger it leads to mental health issues and require ongoing support this type of children or this type of people need continuous support and ongoing support from the health care workers now we are jumping into another chapter another topic of adhd it's attention deficit person doesn't pay any attention it's called attention deficit hyperactivity person is hyperactivity the person does everything all the time the person doesn't enjoy the restful time and it is a disorder attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD cause inappropriate level of attention in attention the person does not pay attention if you call the person does not pay attention if you guide the person to do something does not pay attention and it's all about the hyperactivity the person becomes always doing something always busy just let's say like monkeying always dangling always banging the door doing something horrible and parents life caregivers life becomes so much miserable by those hyper hyperactivity kids and impulsive behavior what do you mean by impulsive is illogical emotional behavior they are always showing this type of emotional behavior they are always impulsive one of the most common childhood disorder along with ADD For adults ADHD interferes with both the work and family functioning Sometime for adult attention deficit hyperactivity disorder interferes means it does not allow it it blocks both the work and family functioning What do you mean by work person may not be continuing the job and family functioning means in the family people have helping each other love and affection going in the family family is a different spirit functions in the family but they don't have it they don't love they don't expect any care and do not care other that type of functioning chronic condition with no care this adhd is a chronic condition it's a neurological and uh, inappropriate uh, functioning of the neurons of the mind that's why if there is no cure for this type of disease although a number of treatment options are available it's only for the symptom management not for the cure autism spectrum disorder This is one of the most common disorder we see so many autistic children it is a neurodevelopment disorder that impairs the person's ability to communicate and interact with others autistic children they are very difficult to handle they are very difficult to provide care because they do not communicate uh, they do not communicate their communication is completely impaired dysfunction and interaction with them is very very difficult you cannot get any feedback they do not interact they do not involve in the discussion they do not share idea this is a neurological disorder there is no cure this is the worst part of this disease there is no cure like other disease only the medication given for the symptom management begins in early childhood see this is a developmental disorder this is begins in early childhood means below the age of 
uh, age is of 18 months and 3 years of age. This is most difficult for the mother and the family. When the child has the autistic behavior and the child is diagnosed with autism. The disease is called autism. The child has problem with social skill. The problem cannot, the child cannot stay with other kids and make the friend play with other kids. Verbal and non-verbal communication problem. Child doesn't communicate at all and there is a problem, both the non-verbal, even the sign language he does not care about, he does not pay attention about that. Repetitive behavior and routines. The child is doing, uttering certain words for many times. They, they use that and the routines means in the same way all the time, they speak in the same way. They, they verbalize certain word, meaningless word and other symptoms might be there. So autistic children are, we can see the autistic children in the community center, uh, community, um, other other community places in the government agency, they are uh, giving them education, they are giving them some kind of improvement and so on. Autism is more common in boys than in girls. Autism, sometimes the disease also is very, very discriminating more common in boys than in girls. The cause is unknown. This is a genetic disorder. Genetic and environmental factors may be involved. Genetic, some, something congenital, something parental, they inherit from the parents of the both side, even the grandparents, and certain environmental factors may be involved. With therapy, the person can learn to change or control behavior but the whole disease cannot be subsiding. Many therapies, therapies are used. Physiotherapies, occupational therapies, speech therapies, different therapies are used to correct the situation. The person needs to develop social and work skill. In the adult life, the person needs to develop social and work skill because we cannot live without society, without friends and family, and we need to do certain work. What type of work? Even the activities of daily living, these are the works for these people. They need to encourage for those activities. Persons with autism may have other disorder. This is the most difficult aspect of the neurological uh, disorder or um, developmental disorder when one problem is there and uh, when there is more than one problem making the child or the adult uh, weaker and weaker every day. Person with autism may also have other disorder like intellectual disability. It means person cannot speak, use the language, communication is impaired. These all are learning is not possible and seizure are common. Person even shows the symptom of epilepsy and seizure. Person falls and starts seizing, shaking the body. Strict routines are important. They need the strict routines. They must be uh, guided for those strict routines and those routines to be followed. Children require careful supervision because they can harm themselves and they can get injury at any time because of those disorders. Caring for the client with developmental disorder and the disabilities. So our role is very, very important here because we are looking after those clients no matter what age of our client is. We have to pay the same attention to them. We have to maintain their privacy. We have to realize their dignity and so on. The work of a support worker is gender blind. We are never biased. We are never having the prejudice. We are always looking after the people as a complete human beings. And we have the quality of empathy. Empathy means putting ourselves in their shoes 
and seeing the world from their eyes, not from our eyes. So, client often have a complex care need. Complex care need means they may be two person help. Sometimes they may be three person help. Sometimes they need to transfer from wheelchair to bed and bed to wheelchair. Sometimes wire lift and mechanical lift should be used. And sometimes they are very violent. Somebody has to work with their two person or sometimes it is three person care. It's called complex care. And their condition becomes very, very worse and worse every month and every year. And they need, they go to the complex care unit. Follow care plan. Always we as a PSW, this is our big book, care plan. We always follow the care plan. If we don't understand anything in the care plan or if we have any confusion in the care plan, we have always the nurses and the supervisor. We need to call them. We need to clarify them before we make any mistake. Consider the client before the disability or disorder. See, this is the competency. As we discuss in other chapters, we can see the person as a whole person for for. For some time, imagine that the person does not have those disabilities. How nice the boy, the girl, the client could be walking, jumping, playing, and happy in the life. Now again, those disabilities are preventing them to enjoy the, the happiness in life. And we have to contribute from our part. And while contributing, this is the nursing care plan we always have to follow. This is the main guidelines we are uh, always uh, following. Clients have the same rights and needs as everyone. No matter what is their age and what is their background or what is their gender or religion or, or ethnic group, it does not matter. We always have to feel that, use our knowledge that they have the same rights and needs as everyone has. Client is unique. Everybody is unique. Everybody is unique. They have unique need. They have unique desire. They have unique problem. Everybody is unique. Promote dignity. That, that's why we have to promote dignity. Dignity is the prestige they deserve. Independence, our goal will be always how to make them independent for their activities of daily living. We have to focus on that. And preferences, it's all about their choices. We have to respect them by allowing them, by letting them express their desire, what they choose to eat, what they choose to wear, what, what, uh, where they want to go. That's called preferences. Privacy. Privacy needs every human being, even after death, people need privacy. This is very important. And safety. Safety is the most important issue because, because of the safety, if the safety is imp impaired, they will have a further problem. They might fall. They might have a head injury. If the client is older, if they fall, they might have a total hip broken and there is another surgery for the hip replacement, knee replacement, their soldier problem, head injury, bleeding in the head and death. Remember, fall is those unintentional, unintentional accident and we have to always maintain the safety of our client. And thank you for your patience and listening to this chapter. Thank you. Have a great time. Bye.